my brothers and sisters, wherever you are, watching us this morning, it's time to have a wonderful time, a presence and a wonderful fellowship in the presence of God. Please gather your loved ones, gather your friends, tell them church is about to start. Let's worship God together this morning and let's pray together and receive the word of grace. The choir, they will lead us in a session of worship. And as they do it, the name of the Lord will be glorified. Just join us this morning. The Lord will bless you. The Lord will increase you. The Lord will prosper you today as we fellowship together in the presence of the living God. Let's receive the ministry of the choir now as they bless us. And as we worship God together, you will be blessed this morning. Hallelujah.
when productivity may not be possible. Thank you, precious Lord, in the name of the Lord Jesus. We are going to pray again this morning that God will bless our nation, Nigeria. That the cry and mourning from sickness will be taken away. And that what is going on now, God will cut it short in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's open our mouths. Father, today, Lord, we want to ask of you, Lord, that you will bless the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Lord, you will make it a land of joy and not a, a land of money. You will make it a land of plenty that is available to all. We want to ask, oh Lord, that you will make it a nation that functions for the citizens of this nation. We pray, oh Lord, that you will promote the righteous. And Lord, you will bring down the unrighteous that make life difficult for the people. Mighty God of glory, take absolute control in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And lastly, this morning, we want to ask God that the word we shall hear will profit us. And that it will do us good. It will be a word of healing, a word of inspiration, and a word that indeed will strengthen us for the week. Thank you, Father, for the word that we are about to hear this morning. We ask that your spirit will flow through the word. You sent your word and it healed them. Let it be the same today. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Wherever you are, can you just give a big, big clap offering to Jesus this morning? Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This morning we will hear God's word and I want us to um, open our Bibles to the book of First Corinthians chapter number 13. We'll be reading only one verse of the scripture. But before then, can we burden our heads as we pray? Father, we pray this morning as your word come forth. Let it bring healings to our spirit man, to our souls, and to our body. Meet everyone at the point of their needs. Let Jesus be glorified today. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. First Corinthians chapter number 13. And we'll be looking at verse 13. And now abided faith, hope, charity, these three, but the greatest of these is charity. Another word for charity is love. The Bible says there are three powerful forces in the kingdom of God. Faith, hope and love these are the three powerful forces in the kingdom of God and there must be a reason why God must have put hope in the midst of faith and love amen everywhere we hear teachings about we hear teachings on faith we are teachings on love, but one rarely hears teachings on hope. But hope is one of the most powerful forces in the kingdom of God. And this morning, I'm going to be speaking on keep hope alive. Keep hope alive. Keep hope alive. God does not waste words. And I believe that for our faith to walk and our love to walk we must have hope Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1 says now faith is the substance of things hoped for the evidence of things not seen it means you have to have hope that something will happen before your faith can walk if you don't have hope that something will happen your faith may not be able to walk. Someone once said, What oxygen is to the lungs 
That is what hope is to life. If one is to be deprived of oxygen for a few minutes or a few seconds, the person may die. Or at least he become brain dead. And that is the same way. If we give up hope, life goes downhill. I have come to tell you this morning, keep your hope alive. Don't give up. Don't give in. Don't lose your hope. As a believer, if you are able to keep your hope alive, it doesn't matter what, you are, what your situation is. It doesn't matter what you are going through. You will come out victorious. I say you will come out victorious in the name of Jesus. Even in this situation, even in this pandemic, if you can keep your hope alive, you will come out victorious. Somebody say amen. What is hope? What is hope? I will define it in three ways. Number one, hope is a living force. A living force that causes a believer to press on in faith despite the prevailing circumstances of life. Hope is a living force. Is the one that makes you as a child of God to press on in faith despite the prevailing circumstances of your life. You remember the case of Abraham in Romans chapter number 4 verse number 17. Maybe we should just read that. Romans chapter number 4 verse number 17. The Bible talks about our father Abraham and he said as it is written I have made thee a father of many nations before him whom he believed even God who quickened the dead and called those things which be not as though they were who against hope believed in hope that he might become the father of many nations according to that which was spoken so shall thy seed be and be not weak in faith he considered not his own body now dead when he was about a hundred years old neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb he staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief but was strong in faith giving glory to God and being fully persuaded that what he has promised he was able to perform somebody say amen Abraham was a man God told that he was going to have a child but Abraham believed God his body was dead his wife's womb was dead the Bible says against hope he believed in hope he believed in hope that was what made him to press on in faith he against hope the circumstances around him was dead the situation doesn't look too good but Abraham trusted God and believed God and the promise seed came I said the promise seed came your promise seed will come if you don't give up hope if you keep hope alive that which you believe God for it will come to pass somebody say amen number two definition of hope which I have here is that hope Hope is the foundation for expectation. Hope is the foundation for expectation. Hope is the expectation that we will have what we desire. Is the foundation for expectation. And we know that expectation is the mother of all miracles. What you don't expect, you don't deserve to get. What you don't hope for, you can never receive. So you need to keep your hope alive. Hope looks up to the positive outcome in spite of the seemingly contrary situation at hand. If you look at the COVID-19, look at the pandemic everywhere, hope says it will come out for my good. That's what the believer believes. The Bible says all things work together for our good. Even this situation, you may not see it, but it is working for our good. You remember God's servant, 
The first time we went live on the fifth of this month, God's servant told us one of the reasons, one of the good that can come out of this situation. Many families, a lot of children wanted their fathers to spend time with them at home and they never had such time. But this situation has made it possible for families to unite together. They can have their prayer out time together. They can have their dinner or their lunch or breakfast together, which they never had. Family relationship has been strengthened by this situation. That's a good out of it. A lot of people, the book you never read. I remember there was a note I have not read for many years. Maybe like 20 or 20 something years ago. I had to go and bring it out. My note on eschatology. To begin to look at the end time again. The teachings that God laid in my heart about it. That's a good coming out from the situation. Hope looks up to the positive outcome. In spite of the seemingly contrary situation at hand. Until hope is lost. Nothing is lost. But when your hope is lost everything is lost when hope is not lost nothing is lost but once you give up hope everything is lost everything is lost i remember a woman even in this situation she she said it was reported that she couldn't look at her children suffering of hunger because there was no food government says there should be a lockdown no provisions for her and she took her life she committed suicide in, why did she do that? She gave up hope. She dropped. She didn't know that something good would come out of it. She shouldn't have killed herself. Now who has she left those children for? They are going to suffer more except God intervene on their situation. When you, when you give up hope, when you lose hope, you lose life. When you lose hope, you lose everything. But when you keep hope alive, everything is in place for you. I like us to look at one man who had a very bad situation in his days. Job. Job chapter 11. Oh, I like this. When I saw this in scripture, I was so glad by it. Job chapter number 11, verse number 18. And the scripture says, and thou shall be secured. What makes you secure? Look at the next line. It said, because there is what? There is hope. <laughs> He said, you shall be secured. You shall dwell in safety. Because there is hope. Yea, thou shalt dig about thee. In other words, you go about your business. You go about your daily chores. Why? Because there is hope. And thou shalt take thy rest in safety. Why? Because there is hope. Also, verse 19. Also, thou shalt lie down. And none shall make thee afraid. Somebody say amen. <laughs> yea, many shall make suit unto thee. In other words, many people will come to you for favor. The man of hope is the man of favor. The man of hope is the man that dwells secured. Look at verse 20. But the eyes of the wicked shall fail. And they shall not escape. And their hope shall be as the living as giving up of the ghost i will talk about that later towards the end of my message the wicked their hope shall be as the giving up of a ghost but for the righteous because of hope you are secured because of hope you will lie down in this season and you will not be afraid no matter what the situation looks like it is subject to change for the better when hope is kept alive nothing dies in and around a believer whose hope is alive i say that again i like it to sink down in your spirit nothing dies in and around a believer whose hope is kept alive the final definition of hope which i have here this morning number three definition is that hope is the anchor to our soul hope is the anchor to our soul. You find that in Hebrews chapter number 6. Hebrews chapter number 6 verse 18 and 19. See what the scripture says about hope. It says that by two immutable things in which it is impossible for God to lie. We have a strong consolation. Who have fled for refuge to lay hold upon the hope set before us. Which hope we have as an anchor of the soul 
both sure and steadfast and which entered it into that within the veil he said that hope is an anchor of the soul an anchor can i tell you is what secures a ship to the bale or to the water it is that thing you used to hold the ship in place and listen without the anchor the ship is always tossed all over the place because it is not secured you remember just now in, in job chapter 11 he said you are secured why because there is hope so the hope is the anchor to your soul if you don't keep hope alive you will be like the ship that is tossed by every wind that's why some people are fainting now some are dying now some are listen listen you know what the devil does to, do to you when there is no hope the devil makes you to see the impossible the devil makes you to see the death count hey people are dying of the pandemic 17 i said yesterday i don't know how many now this morning 17 I see oh people are dying around the world almost 2,000 or there about more persons have died you just keep hearing the figure that are dying but you see when you have hope you will look at the ones who are being afflicted by the pandemic by the virus and they are getting well you don't look at that when a man doesn't have hope he only thinks about the death he doesn't look at those who are recovering from the sickness from the disease from the virus but when you have hope, you know that this is not a death sentence. This is God who is able to keep his own. And if you are a child of God hearing me this morning, it will not come near their dwelling. <laughs> the Bible says a thousand will fall on your right hand and ten thousand on your left hand. It will not come near your dwelling. If you believe it, shout a louder. Amen. Amen. Proverbs chapter 10 verse 28 says, The hope of the righteous shall be gladness. The hope of the righteous shall be gladness. Your hope shall bring joy to your life. Proverbs chapter 23 verse 18 says, Proverbs 23 verse 18 says, say, For surely there is an end. I like this. I told you just that God does not miss words. He says, surely there is an end. There is an end to every virus. Coronavirus had a beginning. It will have an end. <laughs> Bible says surely there is an end and thy expectation thy hope of a better tomorrow shall not be cut short if you believe it say amen faith is now hope is tomorrow faith is now but hope is tomorrow hope says my life will be better again tomorrow hope says we will go back to our duties as it used to be we will resume work again we will resume school again. We will go about our business. That is what hope says. Before I round up this morning, let me quickly share with you how to keep hope alive. I will just tell you two of those things. How do you keep your hope alive? Number one, remember past victories and past deliverances. Amen. You need to remember it. Remember past victories and deliverances. Look at Lamentation chapter 3. Oh, Lamentation chapter 3. Verse number 21. I like us to read it. Oh, I'm looking for it. <laughs> okay, I found it. Lamentation chapter 3, verse 21. He said, This I recall to my mind. This I recall to my mind. Therefore, I have high hope. Because I recall it to my mind, I have hope. That's why I said, Remember past victories. Remember past deliverances. Remember past healings. Remember past breakthroughs. You need to remember it. You need to always remember the goodness of God in your life. Oh, don't forget it. Even in this time, 
Have we not known before that God has hid men before? There was plague in the Bible days and God healed his children. There was plague in Israel, in Egypt. The Bible says in Egypt there was plague. But in Goshen, where the children of Israel were, there was no plague. There was darkness in Egypt, but in Goshen there was light. Oh, remember it! The God who distinguished his children in the days of old, the same God is alive today. He will make a distinction between those who serve him and those who serve him not. If you are a child of God, hearing my voice this morning, watching me this morning, and you know that you serve the living God, God will make a distinction between you and those who do not serve him. The virus will not come nigh their home. Remember! remember it. He said, I remember this. I recall it to my mind. Therefore, I have hope. It is of the lost mercy, verse 22, that we have not been consumed because his compassion faileth not. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, seeth my soul. Therefore, will I hope in him. The Lord is good unto them that wait for him, to the soul that seeketh him. It is good that a man Please, I'd like you to mark that in your Bible. He said, verse 26, It is good that a man should both hope and quietly wait for the salvation of the Lord. It is good for you to hope. It is good for you to hope. Keep your hope alive. And you do this by remembering past victories. You remember David said in Psalm 103 verse 1, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. And that was what David did when he faced Goliath. He remembered past victories. He said to Goliath, You have come with me with a sword and a spear, but I come to you in the name of the Lord who delivered me when the lion came to attack me God gave me strength and I killed the lion when the bear also came God gave me strength and I killed the bear the God who delivered me from the hand of the lion and the bear the same God will deliver me from your hand David remembered the past victory and that gave him hope to say Goliath you are going down I said to you it doesn't matter the Goliath in your life it is going down because God who has delivered men in days of old will deliver you today if you believe me shout a louder amen hope does not disappoint hope does not make you ashamed Romans chapter 5 verse 5 says hope make it not ashamed when you have hope, you cannot be ashamed. When you have hope, even if there is no food on your table, brother, with this lockdown, it is hard for you to feed. If you have hope, God will bring food to you. I, I, I'm not exaggerating. I'm not telling you stories. I'm telling you the word of life. A man that has hope does not, is ne never come to shame because the God you serve is the God of all hope. Let me round up with a second way to keep hope alive. And this is important. If you must keep your hope alive, you must hold on to the word of God. Mm. You must hold on to the word of God. Romans chapter 15. Romans chapter 15, verse number 4. I like this. It says, For whatsoever things we are written are time, we are written for our learning that we through patient and comfort of the scriptures might have what? Might have hope. <laughs> through patient. Through patient and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. The Bible is the book of hope. When you hold on to what God has said, your hope will be alive. That's the truth. When you hold on to what God has said, your hope will be alive. You need to get the word of God. That's why I want to encourage you. Oh, you see, that's I, look. This time is is a, is is turning for your good. It is turning out for your good. Some of you have never read the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. Do you know? In the last two weeks, you could actually read almost five books of the Bible if you do it on a daily basis. Every one one hour, reading one scripture, one chapter of the Bible. You could, look, take hold on the scripture. 
read the scripture read it the bible is the book of hope he said through the comfort of scripture we might have hope let's go back to the story of abraham in romans chapter 4 you remember verse 18 the bible says in verse 18 abraham who against hope believed in hope who against hope believed in hope that he might become the father of many nations look at the next word and please mark that according according to that which was spoken so shall thy seed be according to that which was spoken Abraham's hope was not in the words of a man Abraham's hope was not in the word of a government Abraham's hope was not in the word of a system Abraham's hope was in the word of God because God told you remember in Genesis chapter 15 I think somewhere from verse 1 to 6 one time Abraham was almost losing hope that's what the Bible says against hope he believed in hope Abraham was about losing hope and he said to God God look I'm getting old and my wife is already also old we can't have children again I know you have promised me a seed please Lord just let Eliezer the son of the one of, from Damascus who is my trusted servant let him be my heir let him take over my word let the promise be to Eliezer and God said to Abraham no Eliezer yes he's good he's your servant he's going to be blessed but your wife Sarah shall give birth to the seed of promise the promise will come to, to, to Sarah and Abraham took that word and held to it that's why the Bible says against hope he believed in hope according to the word of God because God has told him it is Sarah is coming from what has God said to you in this season I can tell you what God said to us is in Numbers chapter 31 and the captain of the hundred came and the captain of the thousand came and they said to Moses we have counted everyone every soldier none is missing I can tell you as a child of God who is related associated and connected to this ministry we shall not be missing after the pandemic we shall all be complete you and your family shall be complete we will gather again in church and celebrate the goodness of God because after the pandemic we shall all be complete if you believe me shout a louder amen Amen. hold on to that word that's what you should hold on to in verse 21 Abraham said the Bible said being fully persuaded he staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief what was strong in faith giving glory to God being fully persuaded that what God has promised he is able to perform I have good news for you if God has told you anything God will perform it it doesn't matter how long it takes as long as your hope is alive God will perform it if God says a word to you God will perform it listen to me don't only hold on to the word you need to speak the word to yourself you need to speak the word to yourself Matthew chapter 28 verse 20 says lo I am with you always even unto the end of the age I am with you I will not leave you nor forsake you speak that word to yourself God you said you are not going to leave me I need your presence in my life oh Martha said in John chapter 11 verse 21 Martha said if Jesus if you were here my brother would not have died I know that if you were here my brother would not have died Jesus said even now I'm the resurrection and the life if God is with you nothing can go wrong with you if God is with you nothing can go wrong with you speak that word back to yourself Lord you said you will be with me you will be with me you will be with me Isaiah chapter 43 verse 2 says when you go through the fire I will be with you when you go through the water I will be with you God is with you confess the promises of God confess the promises of God confess it confess it don't let the devil shut your mouth that's how to keep hope alive as you hold on to the word of God confess it oh you remember Genesis chapter 1 verse 3 and God said Genesis chapter 1 verse 6 and God said Genesis chapter 1 verse 9 and God said Genesis chapter 1 verse 11 and God said Genesis chapter 1 verse 14 and God said 
Genesis chapter 1 verse 20 and God said Genesis chapter 1 verse 24 and God said Genesis chapter 1 verse 26 and God said Genesis chapter 1 verse 29 and God said but in Genesis chapter 1 verse 31 which is the last verse in the book of chapter 1 of Genesis and God saw God kept saying and God saw what you continually say is what you will see in your life <laughs> what you continually say is what you will see if you say the pandemic will not touch my life will not touch my children will not touch my family will not touch my members it will not touch you it will not touch you what you continually say is what you will get Job said in Job 14 14 I will wait till my change come I'm not giving up I'm not going to lose hope I'm going to wait oh I can tell you this pandemic will not tell our story we are the ones that is going to tell the story thereof it will have an end it happened many years ago over hundreds of years ago it had an end it stayed for a while but it had an end this same one it will have an end and its end has come in the name of Jesus keep hope alive don't give up hope speak the word of life to yourself hold on to his word what are you saying what has God promised you in first king 8 he said the fear not of all the promises God spoke to the house of Israel all came to pass hold on to the word of God keep speaking it to yourself and your life will never be the same again praise God but do you know that you can't have hope if you are not a child of God God is the God of hope therefore for you to have hope you need to be a child of the king if you are not yet born again we read somewhere in Proverbs chapter 10 verse 20 it said the hope of the righteous shall be gladness but the hope the expectation of the wicked shall cut off shall be cut off in Job 11 verse 20 we read that the hope of the wicked he said their hope is like the giving up of the ghost a wicked man does not have anything to hope the songwriter you remember the songwriter he says my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus blood and righteousness I dare not trust the sweetest frame but holy lean on Jesus name on Christ the solid rock I stand all other ground is sinking sand all other ground is sinking sand you want to be a child of hope wherever you are now hearing me can just bow down your heads and say this prayer with me after now God's servant is coming to pray for every one of you you will receive grace today the grace to keep hope alive will be released upon your life I'd like you to pray with me say dear Lord Jesus I know that I am a sinner and I ask for your forgiveness I believe you died on the cross for my sins and you, and you were raised from the dead for my justification I turn now from my sins and I invite you to come and dwell in my heart and in my life today I ask for the grace to serve you all the rest of my life I will trust you I will follow you as my Lord and Savior thank you for saving me in Jesus name we pray please just bother your heads and just, and just talk to God Lord my hope will be alive I'm not giving up I'm not giving up hope 
in this season I am not giving up hope in this season go ahead and pray God's servant is coming to bless you this morning oh man and brethren that was a good word I pray this prayer for you today that the God of hope will fill your heart with hope and that every expectation you have will be brought to pass nothing will deny you of the fruit of your hope it shall come to realization in Jesus mighty name Amen praise the Lord praise the Lord Please, we are going to uh, furnish the members of this church what will happen on Sunday. The service we are going to hold on Sunday. So you should remain tuned, please. Our Bible study on Wednesday still holds 5.30, please. In your homes, use your Bible study outline. It's in, it's in page 130, study 36. The prayer of Daniel. Let's take our family together, gather us together and study the word of God. On Friday, we are going to have prayer meeting. 5.30 in our homes, please. Gather your wives and children together and pray. Pray about the security of the brethren. Pray about God's provision. Pray about God helping us to keep our hope alive. Pray about our health. On Sunday too, the Sunday school is going to take your Sunday school early in the morning. Sunday school talks about the family that focus on Christ. Praise the Lord. Shall we pray? Lord, we give you thanks. We give you praise. We say, Hallowed be thy name for your word unto your people. Keeping hope alive. Lord, help us not to be al allowed, not to allow anything, Lord, to tarnish our hope in you. Help us to trust you to the end in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for bringing this service to a close. Be thou exalted, O Lord. For in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen.